you would address just the, the, the number of veterans you have this year, the amount of experience you have, and, and how that impacts the, the kind of success you'd like to have? Yep, Jerry. I mean, you know, we <clears throat> we um, we got disappointed in the NSA tournament being knocked out by Xavier, but. You know, when you look at what you had coming back, five starters, and you anticipated Garrick Sherman, an older guy, being eligible, um, you felt you had six guys that have played a lot of college basketball. And, you know, you feel you could be very consistent and very solid. And, you know, one of the things I talked to them about the day after the Xavier game when we got back here was to think about, you know, playing for a regular season championship in the Big East. We've been close the last couple of years, but finishing in the top four. But, um, you know, that's something I think we talked about through the summer. And um, so, you know, it's a group that's been in our program. They know how to play. Um, they share the ball. Uh, I still think, you know, I think you got what I have to remember with them is they still can improve, uh, you know, and, and we're trying to do that on a weekly basis, especially here in November and December. What sort of an advantage, Mike, do you think that experience is against a uh, – talented Kentucky team, but a team that's mostly made up of freshmen. Well, I, I hope I hope it comes into play. You know, uh, that's been a big thing that's helped us here consistently over the years, Jerry, is we've stayed old. You know, we've not had to rely on playing, you know, a lot of young guys. And um, certainly if we're going to be successful on Thursday night, our experience uh, and our poise um, are going to have to play out and we're going to have to really be good in that department. Uh, for close to 40 minutes to beat the talent that they put on the floor. That's getting better. You know, we're watching them. They're getting better and growing up almost daily uh, at Kentucky with that group. Larry, do you have any other questions? Jerry, I'm sorry, Jerry. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know if I didn't yeah. want to. I yeah. guess we're, yeah, ask we're as many go. questions as you need. Oh, okay. Sorry. Right. Well, well uh, Mike, can you talk a little bit about uh, Scott Martin and uh, Eric Atkins and what they bring to your team? Well, Atkins has been just so rock solid for us. You know, I think he's got 17 assists and no turnovers in the last two games. He's just really become a quarterback and an extension of me out there running our team and keeping it simple. So there's a steadiness there, and I guess the same word would go for Scott Martin. You know, here's a guy in his sixth year, steady, a guy that kind of stirs the drink for us. Uh, he helps us flow offensively. Uh, he's a great team defender rotating over, and he's been a great voice. It's probably the closest thing I've had to a player coach when you have a guy that's been in your program this long and this old who knows our system helping our younger guys. And one other thing about the experience, you, you mentioned about how you guys have been able to stay old, as you say. Uh, making it sound like that was uh, something you intended, uh, that that was the plan, to stay old. Why, why that plan? Well, I think uh, the, the way we're set up here and, and uh, you know, we're not going to get as many as the one-and-done guys. It's, you know, it's just a different world. Not that we won't try and recruit some of them. Uh, so we get four, and, and a lot of times I like to make them five-year guys. And how about this? We made Scott Martin a six-year guy. We really broke the – broke the mold. But when when you're redshirting guys and taking transfers, um, you're able to stay old. I've always said I don't want to be in a position where I'm going to the Carrier Dome starting three freshmen. Thankfully, I've not been in that position yet. And that's why I think we've been really consistent year to year because there's always some maturity. I've always had good juniors and seniors helping me run the team, and that's by design. Any pause at all, Mike, with the kind of success that the John Calipari's had at Kentucky with freshmen of, uh, you know, a pause and maybe rethinking, maybe going young? I think, uh, you know, if I could get my hands on three one-and-done guys, I'd, I'd be the first one to do that, uh, you know. Uh, but I think for us, you know, our method's going to be a little bit more. I'm certainly, if a freshman's good enough, he's playing. Cameron Bishot is in there for us this year, and uh, Pat Connaughton last year. And, uh, but but um, I think the way we're set up to and, and, and our university and the kind of kids we're getting here, it's going to be more four- and five-year guys. And, and you know, I, I kind of like, uh, you know, the rhythm of how we do it. Thanks, Mike. Yep. 
Tony, do you have any questions? Oh, uh, yes. Hey, Coach, uh, so after yesterday's game, talk about this the last week, having a better offensive flow, what do you think has contributed to getting your guys' offensive groove going here? I think we've been better screeners. You know, I think there's been some real slippage, and I haven't paid as much attention to that. We've been really concentrating on us defensively, and and I, I kind of like who we've become defensively. But um, I think just better screeners uh, have helped get some open looks. Uh, we shot it better last night. Hopefully that jump starts us. I, 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 you know, I, I thought we were going to shoot it better than we were in our previous games. Um, but when we screen and reverse the ball twice and use our ability to pass the ball, we're good passers, we can get into a really good offensive flow. And um, that's really been the concentration the last week, trying to – work on a smoother offensive flow. There's nothing like making shots that helps your offensive flow. And then switching over to Chase, work on defense so much. How do you neutralize Kentucky and the Panthers? They had 60 in there in their last game. How tough is that front line to go up against? Well, you know, a, a, a really tough front line beat us in New York. St. Joe's old athletic front line. So, you know, we did not have success there. It's another – you know, attempt there. I mean, their 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 shooting percentages in the paint are off the charts. You know, keeping a body on people, uh, not letting them get too deep, um, uh, keeping them to one and done. Uh, it will be the ultimate challenge. But it's a similar preparation, an athletic front line is what we see in the Big East a lot of nights. You know, we have to neutralize these bouncy, athletic, long front lines. The nights we do it, you know, we're able to get out with a win. The nights that it gets to us, we usually lose the game in the Big East. So, similar preparation. And this last one in general, how much has everyone been looking forward to this game since it was announced and since the season really finally tipped off a little while ago? Well, I think for a lot of people, it's our season opener. You know, uh, I, I think people have, you know, our fans and everything have kind of uh, looked at it, and, and I think with the, what football's been doing, it's very fitting now that the season opener comes uh, with a six-week pause before the national championship football game. Um, you know, so I think it's it's going to be a fun night. It'll be a great atmosphere in our building. I think two very good teams going at it, and uh, early in the season. Uh, but but I think for our players, it's one they've talked about all summer. Thanks, Yep. Larry. No, there's no question. I mean, you know, we, we, we will – it'll be, uh, you know, a Big East uh, – it'll be the atmosphere of the Syracuse game last year. And um, we haven't played in that at home. So I have to talk to our guys about us not getting out of character with a crazy atmosphere at home because we've yet to have that. You know, not to – I think when we've had a crazy atmosphere, sometimes we've played too fast on offense. And um, we've gotten a little too excited. So I think that's something I really have to address over the next two days to handle that maturely. Now, these guys have played in a great home atmosphere before, so hopefully, you know, they can digest that. And then could you just talk a little bit about, you talked about Kentucky's guys and paper. What about their backcourt that you've seen that impresses you? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, really impressed with Goodwin, and you know, with the, the plays that he makes and the slashing stuff to the bucket. It's really hard to stop him when he turns the, uh, turns the corner. Um, very impressed, you know, uh, with, with he's, he plays with a steadiness and a, uh, and a great poise. Uh, you know, they come off the bench with uh, Polson. He's solid. I know Harrow is back, and I've always liked him, so we expect to see – a lot of him. Um, Poitras, I think, is becoming a more comfortable perimeter player. He was kind of a foreman in high school. I think he's become a more comfortable and efficient, you know, uh, face-up guy uh, for them. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, we, we've, we, we respect their perimeter. We, you know, how do we get them from turning the corner and getting into our paint because then you get put in help and recover, and then they throw it at the rim. Their post feeds are lobs to the rim with rolling athletes. That's how they feed the post. So, you know, again, it's not something we haven't seen before because the Big East does a lot of that. Uh, but I think it's it's really a challenge, you know, the way Knowles and, and, and Cauley Stein play 
with their elbows at the rim. You know, that's a level where we're going to have to have bodies on people, and we're going to have to understand they're going to have some highlight dunks. Thankfully, they only count two. Well, I think you're going to have to get some buckets outside the paint because of their shot blocking. And, and so we're going to have to make some shots, whether it's threes or mid-range stuff. We're going to have to stop and make some shots. And I, I would hope we could get some stuff maybe in transition so you're not having to play against those shot blockers waiting back there in the paint. Um, you know, again, it, as I refer back, there's, you know, when we play a Syracuse, we play a Georgetown sometimes. There's some length, uh, uh, certainly uh, Louisville some length in the paint that, that, that changes some shots. So you got to be able to make some stuff outside the paint. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sean, do you have any questions? Yeah. Hey, Mike, um, you know, you said a little bit ago that uh, you like what you've become defensively. How, how would you describe that right now? Field goal percentage defense. You know, we're not really turning you over. And that's kind of who we've been here through my tenure. Uh, I think we're better at our body position, and I think we're better because we're bigger at times. But uh, keeping people in front of us, guarding your guy, and then keeping it to one and done, you know, that, that's that been really a key. We don't foul much. People don't get to the foul line on us. We've been good guarding the arc, you know, not letting people light us up from the three-point line. So there's a, you know, there's a positioning uh, defensively, field goal percentage defense. We talk about if you can keep it under 40, that's excellent. And uh, that will really be challenged on Thursday because of the percentages they're shooting, especially inside the arc. And then, you know, your free throws, I know you'd obviously like to be better, but how, how just how concerned are you? right now especially when you go into a game like this yeah we're gonna we're gonna need to be better there you know we're gonna need to be better there I mean we didn't get there a lot last night but we were a little bit better and I'm, I'm hoping you know I'm kind of banking that our shooting is coming around the way we shot it from the three-point line but the, we get to the foul line a lot especially because those big guys are able to draw fouls we have some drivers that could get in there Grant draws fouls we're gonna have to capitalize better from the foul line to beat a very good team and that's what we got on Thursday and then now you've had seven games, and you you know you, you knew what you were going to get presumably from from Jack. Can you just talk about you know that balance that you're looking for between he and Sherman? Because obviously you've seen some good things from Sherman too. Yeah, those two guys together, I've been pleased. And it you know Scott Martin was down with some tendonitis for a couple days, and it almost helped us be able to get reps for the two big guys together in practice and in games. And I think. We're going to have to play a lot that way. They they really like playing together. I think they're getting better at playing off of each other and keeping good spacing and not cluttering the lane up so our perimeter guys can drive. Uh, but I think for Garrick Sherman, big strides for him in, in the last week. You know, we're going to really need him to be good for us, and I think he's he continues uh, to get real confident for us. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Mark. Hey, Mark. Um, you mentioned shot a crack in the rotation, and the minutes have gone up every game. Do you expect that to continue versus Kentucky, or are you a little more reluctant to play a freshman in his eighth game in a game like this? Well, you're talking about uh, – I'm sorry, you broke up with Cam. You're talking about Cam? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I'm I, Cam is in the club, man. You know, he is in the club. And I, I think, you know, I'm looking past freshmen. I mean, he has come in and scored the ball for us. And he continues to be a more responsible defender. There's still a long way to go. And we're on him every day about that. Um, but I told my staff the other day, don't yell at him too much about defense because I don't want him you know, whacked out when he takes jump shots because those things need to go in. And um, he, he's, he's really – he has become part of our rotation and is a key guy. Hey, first half of the BYU game, Grant's not playing very well. He get, comes off the bench and scores for us to kind of keep us hanging around. He comes in last night, makes shots. We want to continue to make him feel like he's an old guy. So you mentioned being an old team, you know, year in and year out. How, how does that affect your recruiting pitch to guys like that with a short rotation and a veteran lineup every year? What? Did it tougher to sell the top tier recruits and the one and dones? Well, you know, um, you know, the, again, the one and dones is not, not that we don't try, but the, the one and dones have not really been something we've chased as much. I think what I look back and I show them is when freshmen are ready, and Cam is this year, Connaughton was last year, they play for us. Tory Jackson. Luke Herringote. If you're ready as a freshman, 
you're going to play and be in the rotation. But we've done a good job of getting a good group of freshmen, Abramitis, Rob Kurz, Ryan, you know, guys that we've redshirted or we've let them the old-fashioned way earn their stripes in practice as a freshman, Jack Cooley, almost for two years, earn your stripes in practice and then be ready to be a veteran guy. So, you know, the, the, the marquee young guys that we sign, the guys that are really ready, they play. And the guys that aren't, we don't panic and, or flush them. We redshirt them and just keep teaching them and getting older and stronger. Thanks, Mike. Mm-hmm. Gary, do you have any questions? Yeah, uh, Mike, how you doing? Hey, Gary. Hi. All right. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about your offensive balance. I mean, um, you look at the scoring and, excuse me, guys, so it, it, it looks like your scoring has been pretty evenly distributed. Has that been kind of a surprise to you? No, I think I, I really felt – with this group, you know, um, and it was with the starters last year, it was, it was a lot of different guys, and, and I think it can still be a lot of different guys, and you can add two guys. Our two guys coming off the bench can be our leading scorers. And, and so uh, the way we pass the ball and move it, uh, I think we're smart enough to know we keep hitting the open guy and we'll ride whoever is going. And the great thing about it is this group is very secure with other guys being the leading scorer. And, and understand that's how we play and, and, and that's how we're going to be successful. I think they love, they love to look, and we've really harped on this in my tenure, assist to turnover. You know, they really look at that. You know, are we taking care of the ball? How many assists did we have? They take a lot of pride in that. And, and I think that helps our balance uh, in scoring. Have you been pretty – do you feel like you've done a good job or this team has done a good job of really trying to play under control and, and set the tempo through these first seven games? You know, I think this team really learned last year, really our program learned in the last three years, how to better control tempo from the offensive side. And, um, and so this group, the starters, ha really understand, you know, if we don't have it in transition, to be patient on that offensive end. Sometimes when our atmosphere is rocking early, we shoot it a little quick just because we're excited. And I, I, we got to be better about that uh, on Thursday because every possession is going to be very valuable. But again, with this group, they, they know how they've played. They remember how they were successful last year controlling tempo. And when you have veteran guards and a guy like Atkins who really kind of controls the tempo, you know, I feel we, we will be good at that throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Tim, do you have any questions? Yes, just one. Hey, Mike. Uh, hey, you Tim. Protect your home court, and really over the past six and a half years, better than anybody. Do you got? Do you make the team cognizant at all of uh, the reality that Big Blue Nation is probably coming to South Bend as well for this game? Not, not really. I think for our guys, I have not. You know, we're very proud of of the of what we've done at home and. And it's been a great advantage here, and, and we really hang our hat on that. I, I don't think I need to overdo it. Um, it's another home game for us. It's a high-level home game. It's a high-level kind of Big East game. Um, can we deliver on that stage? This program and this group has delivered on that stage uh, time and time again. Uh, so it's familiar territory for us. I don't want to, you know, con you know, distract them with anything like any more than that. Yep. Adam, do you have any questions? <clears throat> hey, Mike, how are you? Adam, how you doing, partner? Good, buddy. Um, can you kind of air on Nerlens Noel and Anthony Davis a little bit? I know a lot has been made about this comparison. You know, Anthony grew up as a guard and then became a big guy. Nerlens has always been a big guy, but their statistics are pretty similar yeah. this year. Uh, you know, what do you see there, and then what do you? I think it's you know it's kind of unfair. To, to, to Nerlens to be making the Anthony Davis comparison, even though it's it's unescapable. You ha I guess it's just going to happen. Um, you know, to let that let, – let, let Noel just develop as he's developing. The one thing I'm very impressed with is, is how good Noel is uh, with the ball. He's a heck of a passer, you know. And what I remember him from the AAU circuit, watching him, he was so unselfish with his AAU team, and he continues to be that. 
Um, so I, I think that's something that maybe is lost in the shuffle when you think about him as a shot blocker and a guy that plays above the rim and finishes. I, I'm just so impressed with his basketball IQ. And if you look, you know, John has him catching the ball at the up at the high post a lot and doing a lot of dribble exchanges. That's how good they feel about him making plays with the ball in his hands. Do you think in some ways Willie Cauley maybe has a bigger, higher ceiling now than Nerlens, or how, how good can he be? You know, hard to tell. I mean, it'd be hard for me to hard for me to really tell. Uh, great story about Cauley Stein. My son is a grad assistant at Kansas football. And he calls me in the summer two years ago. He said, Dad, we have a seven-foot wide receiver in our team football camp. He said, this guy's a freak. He's flying all over the place. And obviously it was it. It was, it was Cauley Stein. And, of course, the rest is history. He's become one heck of a basketball player. And I think he's surprised everybody, including John Calipari, and, as far as um, – you know the 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 player the basketball player he's become so quick but uh i'm very impressed with him how he scores it around the bucket how he runs uh but they're they're both really hard to deal with because how high they play above the rim at times yeah thanks coach yep all right bud does anyone on the line have any follow-up questions okay we're going to take questions for people here Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, uh, um, I, I, I think I think we've done a better job of finding a little more ourselves, especially because we needed to find out a little bit more about ourselves offensively. Um, you know, uh, from New York to last night, we made some progress there. Um, we talked about some of the things we stressed offensively. Garrick Sherman getting comfortable and confident has really helped us. B-Shot becoming more confident has, has helped that. Jaron Grant, I think, calming down and understanding he's got other good players to play with and he doesn't have to carry the load. Um, you know, uh, uh, Eric Atkins just being unbelievably rock-solid quarterbacking us. So, yeah, I, I've, you know, I've, I feel we've made some progress there. I still think and I, I got to keep reminding myself and our team of this. I still think we are, we can get we can improve throughout the year. And I made the comparison to our team two years ago, who was kind of a finished product. This group is still. I mean, Jaron Grant, as much as he was talked about in the preseason, is still figuring it out. And we got to keep teaching and keep helping him. And you know, Connaughton's become a better all-round basketball player. Uh, you know, Scott Martin's shooting the ball better than he's ever shot the ball. You know. Who, is, is, you know, can we keep that going? So, um, yeah, I, I do feel with what we've done in the preseason, we're prepared to play a game like this. You look at the Syracuse game last year, and then maybe Georgia two years ago, and Alabama back when Alabama yeah. came in here. What can one game early do for the confidence of a, of a team yeah. for, for the long haul? Yeah, no, no. You know, well, you know, last year we didn't get any of these. You know, we, we couldn't get any of these. Thank God there was enough in the Big East to get. Um, uh, you know, you feel you, you you want to get one or two of these before the Big East season starts, and I, I think it would be um, it would be great for this group's confidence moving forward. It really would make them, you know, uh, believe uh, they know they feel they let let one get away in New York. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, they've talked a lot about that, so it, I think it would be a great help to us psychologically. I, you know, I, I didn't confront them much. You know, I, I think when as old as those guys are and as smart as those guys are, they, they, you know, took it upon themselves that, boy, we could have been better against their front line. Uh, you know, they're, they're their worst critics. They're hard on themselves, um, especially Garrick and Scott. They're very hard on themselves. So, you know, it wasn't one where you're getting after them. I think it was uh, – Let's come back and practice, and and I think you know their, their frame of mind coming into this one now, they know. And I'll make the comparison. You know, we the last challenge of a front line we had like this, we didn't do a very good job. That, that's about as all I need to say. I don't think I need to harp on it too much over the next two days. Mike, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, you know, uh, it's funny, you know, you go into the season and people talk about you or they're ranked in the preseason. you got to remember – we're, we're still growing. This, this, we still want to grow. We still got to teach. We still got some guys that are unsure. And um, there's still a process that we're in. And I, I think for me, I got to continually remind myself. I may at times early in the season got ahead, you know, and, and, and God, I wish we were further ahead. And I say, you know what? Go back and teach. You know, remember the five month marathon that we're in. Um, you know, but we got great students here. As you know, guy, we have guys that are plugged in, and they, you know, they want to be good, and they expect a lot of themselves. Um, you know, I think a lot of times this year it'll be me picking them up after disappointment, like in New York, then browbeating them more. When in doubt, teach. When in doubt, teach. It's a good one. Very good. Spoken like a true coach. You know, absolutely. That too. I, yeah. <laughs> how much did, when you were recruiting Cam, the high profile guy like that, how much did playing time get talked about? Like they then yeah. Um, no, you're, you're talking about it uh, a lot. But, you know, as much as playing time and the overall Notre Dame experience was 50 50, and you know what? Let me rephrase that. The overall Notre Dame experience probably was 60 40 this school, what it could do for him. It was very clear with him and his mother, the total package here. Um, certainly, as they were thrilled about what this place could do for him as, as a young man and an education, we were able to show that, you know, you're going to be able to be in there. We're recruiting you to be part of the rotation. Now, here are the things you need to do. You've got to get stronger. Well, he gained 13 pounds. One of the things that our strength coach loves about him. He said, he's so darn competitive. I've been very impressed with the student he is. He wants to be good. When we get on him about defense, he doesn't hang his head. We get on him about something, he, he's engaged. Um, he knows, he, you know, last night, you know, I, I wish I didn't have him in at the end last night, but I didn't have anybody else to put in. He was so pissed off about how the turnovers he had. And, you know, I don't want, I mean, he played really well. It's just that he was handling the ball at the end and it got sloppy. So, um, it was part of the discussion, Brian, but here was a high-profile guy that him and his family were really looking big picture, too. So that was helpful. Any other questions? See ya. Oh!